The world of professional wrestling is tough. There is no question. Bumps, bruises, and injuries are commonplace. But that is nothing compared to life behind the scenes. Terrible. You can't trust anyone. Um, and most people say you can't trust the promoter. But I, I worry who I can trust. But despite being unsure about his surroundings, Mike Davidson and the rest of Action Wrestling Entertainment are going forward. AWE got started on a vision that uh, Winnipeg was a wrestling town, and it's a pro sports town to a certain degree. And uh, we took a model that was similar to the WWE model of 1984, a model that was similar to the WCW model of 1990, and a model that was similar to TNA in 2002, and we thought we're going to fly it in Winnipeg and see what happens. Really risky, and uh, but I'm happy to see some early results that are really encouraging. AWE is not even a year old, but the promotion is already making a big splash in the industry, and more and more people are taking notice, thanks in most part to new pay-per-view deals, head and shoulders above other wrestling promotions that have come and gone. I don't want to badmouth anyone, but advertising budget's a big, a big ind ind indicator. If people don't know you're there, they're not going to be able to support you. Um, I think we're a fan-friendly organization. We make sure that we bring in some really big stars, recognizable stars that everyone can recognize, and we make them available to everyone. Um, our product speaks for itself. It'd be supply and demand. I mean, is the town demanding wrestling or, you know, a promotion? Or can you get around? How do you get around Vince? <laughs> how, how do we figure out how can we get around Vince? Oh, we can't. So we'll just run little stuff. I mean, that's even in the States, that's what they do. Well, that's the difference between us and a lot of other things. It's called professionalism and whatnot. And we have that professionalism. And some of the other people don't. And some of the people that, that do run those particular companies, they don't have a clue. They don't. They think that they do. They, they talk a big game. But... They have no game. That's pretty much what it comes down to. It started out where we were just going to be a Winnipeg company, and then we were going to be what the we were going to be the WWE, what the CFL is to the NFL. And then every time, every day, someone else contacts us and says, "You guys have something here. Let's go further. Let's go farther. Let's go faster." And now it's going to mean shows in the U.S. It's going to mean uh, it's going to mean some tours internationally, countries like China and stuff like that. So to that, to me, that's very exciting. The original vision was to be the minor leagues, but now the Winnipeg-based company is home to the up-and-comers. People do say, you know, that we, we could be number three or number two. We could compete with TNA right away. I don't want to say, hey, Vince, I'm coming after you, because yeah. well, that would be a great way to get everyone on my show a contract and, and then be stuck with no one. But um, I think if the marketplace if the marketplace was to support us similar, like... Um, 3,000 people check out a SmackDown show at the MKS Center. If, say, 2,000 people come to check us out, that would say in Winnipeg we're definitely competing with WWE, and then we'll take this on the road and try the same model in Calgary, Edmonton. And once we get two or three or four of those markets, then Vince is going to start saying, holy, these guys are really, really catching up to us. And I think that would be a really interesting dynamic in the wrestling world. But AWE does not want to get too big too fast and end up stepping on toes. For the most part, We've fallen under the radar a little bit, which is good. It helps us It helps us more than it hurts us to be under, not in their radar. Because once we're in their radar, they'll do things like book buildings the same night in the same town. We wouldn't want that. So I don't mind. I, I respect what they do, and, and they're an inspiration to us more than anything. I hope they don't think we're trying to you know, take away their market, because we're not. So far, finding a niche has been tough. Getting into the U.S. is the next goal. Beyond that, it's more international expansion. Everything is building, including the fan base and the revenues. I wouldn't say the investors are, you know, jumping up and down for joy, but we're not, we're certainly not losing a lot of money either. Like, there, we might take a hit one night and the next night make up for it. Um, TV distribution helps, pay-per-view distribution helps, sponsorship, local sponsorship has been so good to us, and the, those companies that sponsor us are, are so valuable to us. The fans that buy the tickets, you know, so many different revenue sources, we're not doing bad at all. This building's holding all it can hold, and those buildings hold all they can hold. The, the intensity of the people here is just as much as they are when there's 20,000. They're just a little noisier because you're in a bigger building. I mean, the people, honestly, in Winnipeg, the people are always good here. I mean, when I was in New York and come here, they were always loud. It started out as what was going to be a Winnipeg company, and then it was going to be a Manitoba company, and then it was going to be a Canadian company. Now it's going to be a worldwide kind of company, and that's, that's something we're really proud of. Don't go far. When we return to the ring, we take you behind the curtain and show you what it takes to put on a show. That's next on Manitoba Moments.
On a chilly December day in Manitoba, thousands of people flow into a gymnasium to witness AWE at its best. And Mike Davidson is nervous, but in control. For one more song, so let's make our way towards Gorilla. Yeah. Uh, what's that? What are we going to do in the beginning? Okay, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, Darren, uh, Buff needs some uh, direction on the promo off the start. Is he coming out or just Kip? Uh, we're just going to be Kip. Okay, good. yeah, good. excellent. Yeah. Last minute details on a show that is slated to run more than two hours and took months to prepare. We have 15 people working full time. Uh, day in, day out to get ready for every single show, whether it's in TV production, whether it's TV distribution, whether it's signing talent, travel, everything, getting everything done. Show day alone, we probably have 100 people who are going to put in 15 hours today. So if you count the man hours, it's extreme. The work is paying off, but not everything is perfect. Maury, more. we need to do something on the lighting. It's very dark in all four corners. Come see. Excuse me, excuse me. We're getting very dark shots at all four corners. Is there any way we can get some more lighting on those corners? Got it. I had to go down to 94, uh, 46K because we put that last time. The market has a perception that, oh, it's wrestling and, uh, you know, it's it's not real or it's fake. And, and if they watch it the same way they watch Las Vegas with that same open mind or the same way they watch Corner Gas, then it's not that bad. As a promoter, Davidson is the writer, producer, and director. And right now, his show is off schedule. Okay, now get back here, buddy. Be quicker getting back, sorry. eh? No, don't sell around the ring like that. Sorry. Because we're on tight time to get the whole show in. Okay, sorry. We want to build our storylines based on elements of, of reality, elements of, of hatred, elements of, and I know that's a strong word, but elements of humor, and we've tied all together so everyone has an emotional attachment to some part of the show. This is what professional wrestling is all about, but there is more to it. I think um, the key word there is promotion. So if people actually get out there and promote and then have a good product on top of which, you know, often there's a lot of politics in wrestling. A lot of people are booking their friends and their family members rather than talent. If you book talent that people want to see, people will pay to see it. And on this night, almost 3,000 pay to see the likes of Billy Gunn and Scott Steiner former WWE superstars that are getting another chance to connect with the fans. With smaller crowds and stuff, it's more intimate, it's more personable. You know, instead of big buildings, you know, you're talking to one person, but in smaller, like, tight-knit groups, you can almost, it's almost like you can get everybody, and that's what people like. And I mean, that's what draws people to the smaller, smaller shows, because if they got a guy that they've seen and they know that they like, then it's more personable. It's almost like I can reach out and touch everybody in the crowd instead of, you know, trying to grab 20,000 people. Don't go far. So you want to be a wrestler. We catch up with a Winnipegger that is living his dream and some advice from some of the greats. That's next on Manitoba Moments. This was Ryan Wood five years ago. He was the only Manitoban on Team Canada heading to the World Junior Baseball Championships. A career on the diamond seemed to be in his grasp, but life's path has changed. This is Red Hot Ryan Wood today, a key cog with the AWE's wrestling promotion. I was always playing baseball and I was always wrestling at the same time. Basically, I would spend my winters, because I also played hockey, but I would kind of put hockey on the back burner to become a wrestler and, and summer I'd concentrate on baseball and, and winter I'd concentrate on wrestling and make, to make sure that's even because it looks off a little bit. Yeah. How's that? Is that even? Okay. Well actually I grew up in East Kildonan. Uh, I used to go to uh, Chalmers Community Club every Thursday. I used to live and die by Chalmers Community Club wanting to watch the local wrestling show and you know, one thing led to another, and I thought, ah, you know, I, I just wanted to be a ref at first. I didn't want to be a wrestler. I was like, ah, I'm too small. I don't want to be a, re a wrestler. And then, you know, one thing led to another. You know, guys are smaller than me. We're getting in there and wrestling, and I'm like, well, if these guys can do it, so can I. And when I first got into wrestling, my, my dad especially was, wasn't uh, the most happy guy that voted. He's like, why would you want to do something like that and hurt your body? And, you know, I... Um, I've always liked to be the center of attention in anything I do.
Wood is a natural athlete that excelled at anything he ever tried, so to some, a career in the ring is a bit of a shocker. Sports-related wise, there isn't a sport. I don't think I grew up playing. Uh, high school, I played, you know, volleyball, basketball. You know, I was going from one practice to the next. And but you know, as you get older, you kind of pick and choose. And you know, everyone picked me to be, you know, a baseball superstar or a hockey superstar. And I just I surprised everybody, especially you know, I, the other day I was just on another uh, sports channel and. People are seeing me out, and they're like, hey, man, I saw you on TV, and it's like, I didn't know you did that. And mm -hmm. some people that I haven't seen in years are like, wow, you know, it's awesome. i got to come to the show. And yeah. It's cool to, to have those type of people, you know, to actually, you know, remember who I am growing up and stuff, but also going, wow, I, I always knew you liked wrestling, but I never thought that it would be something that you got into. Winnipeg's rich history in wrestling is something to think about, but for Wood, he would rather focus on the moment than reflect on the past. I, I wouldn't say the history of, of wrestling in Winnipeg really... Um, interests me a whole lot um but i mean like the, the history of it is big i mean when it comes to awa and stuff I'm, I'm not hugely familiar with it all i mean i was a big wwf fan growing up and um and, and like i said i used to always watch the local stuff like you know the the uh iwa that like tony candela ran on cky television every saturday morning the same episode would run each and every week but i'd still watch it the bulk of Wood's time is spent behind the scenes, but the rush into the lights, especially at home, continues to give him a boost. Coming out through that curtain particularly, when you're seeing as many people that usually show up to these types of shows, it's, it's really it's really a big adrenaline rush. I mean, you know, a lot of guys, they, they do they have their own little routine and stuff to walk through the curtain and, and get fired up. And me, it's, I got to look, see the people, and it's right away, I'm, I'm good to go. As long as, like, big crowds, little crowds, big crowds, doesn't matter. As long as there's people up there, I'm ready to roll and I just got to take a look see what's out there and you just kind of adjust to the amount of people in there and the type of uh, match that you're going to do. He has gone from rep to wrestler to behind the scenes. He is involved with sales and marketing for the Upstart promotion. He has wrestled all over North America and for the big names like the Hart family. He's currently preparing to tour China. You know, six years ago when I got into wrestling, if you would have told me, ah, all you're going to be doing is making a living off wrestling, I probably would have laughed in your face, but now it's, damn, yeah, it's all I do. It's awesome. Right now, I'm just trying to get my name out more in the States. Uh, all over Canada, people know me, and, and getting in the States is, is a big thing, because, you know, there's, there's some money to be made in the States, and, and apparently, you know, from what I'm understanding, we got tours lined up to go to China and, and, and stuff like that. And, I mean, that's a big deal, because, I mean, it's, it's good money, and, you know, it's, it's good exposure for yourself. So the money is there, and he has seen the world, but not everyone is as lucky. Some of the veterans of the sports entertainment industry warn others with the exact same dream even to the extent to not recommend it to their own children. It's something that I did so they can have things that I didn't have, and I was, I mean, I was blessed and lucky enough. I've been all around the world and for free. You know? The only thing I had to do was go out there and entertain people, but I've been to every country, every place that I wanted to go, and I did all I had to do to take care of them. So, and they're a lot more intelligenter than I am. <laughs> see that word, intelligenter? So, you know, so, and they're, they're just smarter than I am, and I don't want to see them, you know, try to start a family and try to do this business at the same time. I mean, I was, I did that, but it was, you know, just, <laughs> you know, you miss out on everything, your kids, everything they do, you know, Maybe you'll be home lucky for one time a year that you get to see something that they do at school. Your wife leaves you eventually <laughs> because she's tired of being alone. So, you know, and it's, it's, it's rough. It's, it's rough up there, and people don't realize how rough it is. The toughest lesson to learn, I think, is um, obviously dedication. You know, you got to be dedicated to what you do, and I'm sure you hear it all the time. Uh, you, no matter what you do in life, you have to be dedicated. But with this, uh, we're on the road 260 days a year. Um, your body tends to break down at times, and uh, there are no off times. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're told that we have to work, and uh, as long as you're able to walk and get to that ring, you're, you're considered uh, uh, one of the guys that are going to have to go and produce every week, four or five days a week, every single week of the year. So um, I think dedication is the, is the toughest thing, and not just in the ring, but the traveling, um, the, the appearances, carrying yourself uh, as a person, carrying yourself as a company representative. Um, you know, the, you, you always have the public looking at you, all eyes are on you at all, at all times. What is the toughest lesson to learn when it comes to professional wrestling? You know, they're all tough. Uh, there's, there's a lot of, you know, and, and, and I mean, you could go look at it in terms of, of attitude or, or, you know, what we actually physically do to our bodies in the ring. Um, it, it, 
it, it, it's all tough. It's all very tough. There's, there's a lot of uh, lessons to, to, to learn, and I see a lot of guys, young guys coming in that um, um, certain things will happen to them, and they don't know how to handle it, and that'll, that'll um, lead them astray. So it, it's all in, uh, you know, taking the punches and rolling with them, so to speak. I was saying, I think it's easier to become Tom Cruise, the next Tom Cruise, than it is to become the next Rock. It's just... So what keeps it going? Uh, same thing as everybody else, hope. But of course, they say you die with hope. <laughs> but yeah, hope. Hope, and it's fun, and it beats the hell out of the 9 to 5. And uh, I get to go to different countries and see how other people live and learn new languages and meet new people, and I don't have to deal with the same people all the time, so... Would you recommend it to someone that... No. What would you say to someone that wants to be a wrestler? Um, honestly, I wouldn't recommend it because it's very, very hard. It's very hard, and it's harder now than ever. Um, if they had the look and the package and the drive and desire, I would recommend something more like you know, acting instead, because there's more outlets for it. You have theater, you have TV, you have movies, you have, you know, you can go to many different countries and, and be successful instead of just being basically kind of one company or 1.5 companies to choose from. So, but if somebody were adamant about getting into it, I would just tell them that there's going to be a lot of tests and it's not easy and it's hard and if you really, really want to do it, keep going back. No matter how much you get the crap beat out of you, no matter how terrible it seems, no matter what your treatment is, just keep going back, keep going back, keep going back. After more than a decade in the business, Kip Sop has seen it all. Known as Billy Gunn in the ring, Sop has been to the top with the major organizations in the sports entertainment industry. Yes, performing in front of 600 million fans a night worldwide is a thrill, but after the lights and camera turn off, the real part of big-time wrestling sets in. That's why Sop will never return to the major player in the business. I don't need the hassle anymore because just not the wrestling part where I go through the curtains on me. They can't tell me anything. They can't tell me what to do. But when I go through the curtain, what I do is good. And, uh, you know, obviously because I was around long enough that people enjoy what I do because I always give it 110%. But when you come back through the curtain, <laughs> there's like a big smoke screen. When you come back through the curtain, then you got to listen to all the crap. You know, 20,000 people telling you what to do. Everybody trying to take your spot. You know, everybody's stabbing everybody else in the back. Hey, he didn't do this right. He, he didn't do this right. You know, they don't point out the 20 things you did good. They'll pick out the one thing that you did bad. And, and I don't need that headache. And, and any a little bit of advice you give to someone getting into it? Yes, yeah, stay humble. You know, that's the biggest thing I see in young guys coming in is that they walk in with their chests all bored out and they're like, you know, well, I can do this and I can do that and I'm, you know, I'm this and I'm that. And it's like, it, it don't mean nothing. It's like, stay humble and, and listen and learn. And I tell, I tell these guys, be like a sponge, soak it all up. Listen, listen to the guys talk that have been around for a while. Listen, you know, when they're talking, two guys are sitting down talking about different things regarding wrestling. Just, you know, ask them if you could sit and just listen to them. Learn, learn as much as you can and stay humble because the business is, is changing. It's, it's like I'm still learning. It's changed since I've started. It's, it's, you know, it's constantly evolving. After six years, Wood has seen that part of the business as well. But he isn't turning his back no matter what anyone says. I'm going to be, be around for as long as AWE is going to be around. And I don't know if I got lucky and, and got to go to the next level. And I'll, I'll definitely take advantage of it. But for now, AWE is home and I'm happy to be here for sure. Don't go anywhere. When we return, we hit the road with the most well-known wrestler from Manitoba, Chris Jericho, also known as Chris Irvin. He lets us into his world. And that's next on Manitoba Moments. It's the rock star life of a WWE superstar, but a 13-year-long road for Chris Jericho hasn't always been paved by yellow bricks. I set up the ring, and my job, like I said, was to sell programs and stuff. The one time the ring actually broke during a match, so I had to go underneath the ring and kind of hold it up with my, with my hands and make sure the thing didn't fall. And It was a real uh, good education on what the wrestling business is all about. The 32-year-old has wrestled all over the world and wrestled the biggest stars, but it's his start on the indie circuit in Manitoba and a healthy background rooted in Winnipeg that has made his life on the road a life of loneliness bearable. I wrestled in front of 70,000 people, and it's a lot harder to wrestle in front of seven people where you see each guy going, this sucks, <laughs> boring. The way I can spot a guy who has talent is, number one, his attitude. And number one, and number two is the way he wrestles. 
And Chris had everything. I never can recall where Chris Jericho ever refused. Chris Irvin is the man that leaves the arena every night. Somebody completely different than the role that he plays. I don't care if I'm if I'm the world champion, which I have been, or whether I'm losing in the first match, which I've done as well. I just want to make sure that I put the best match on that I can, steal the show, and make sure that the crowd has a great time. And not a lot of guys remember that it's show business. You know what I mean? Not a lot of guys, not a lot of guys look at wrestling as show business, but I do. He's got one of the biggest talents that we have, uh, not just in the ring, but in charisma, on the microphone. Um, when you have the total package like Chris Jericho, um, you, you, your limitations are, are endless, and I think uh, he's proven that by being champion already. Being champion is one thing, but the R word will be a reality in the next 10 years. Physically, I don't know if I could take it. Mentally, I don't know if I could take it. But the natural entertainer will never retire. Work in Hollywood and a life as a rock star is calling. There's a lot of the things that I want to do. Uh, I have to continue to be creative. I have to continue to entertain people and, and, and meet people and, and talk to people because that's, that's what I enjoy doing. And uh, I don't plan to be wrestling when I'm 40 years old. Don't quote me on that. But um, it's not that I don't plan retiring when I'm 40 years old either. I mean, like I said, there's a whole other world out there that uh, I want to explore.